that's enough for Mr. Jackson. Look, I don't usually talk about celebrity deaths. I'm real sad Ferris Fawcett died. I liked her. I liked Ed McMahon, classy guy. Bob Chapman was telling me off air how he knew Ed McMahon. That was a pretty interesting story. But the, the point is, we've got to tell him to tell that story next time he's on air with us. The point is, I'm not going to spend any more time on this than need be. I'm going to move into the serious issues in just a moment. But this is the same Michael Jackson everybody's defending and they have him on the cover of every newspaper and magazine saying the king of rock and roll, the king of pop, oh, we love you, and people crying and candlelight vigils. This is disgusting. This is a freak who would hang babies off of buildings threatening to basically drop them. This is a guy that had a Neverland ranch to lure kids and then had high security motion sensors and locks on his bedroom door and who would give the children the Jesus juice. All those recordings of him getting them all drunk and making them pass out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he may have been able to pay off people $10 million here, $5 million there to shut up, but I am tired of Michael Jackson assaulting my psyche and having to look at the bat creature, the vampire, on television. I am sick of it. And I'm even more sick of a bunch of emails I got, people angry at me that I was talking about how the guy was a piece of garbage and how I don't want to hear about him. What is wrong with you people? Do you forget how disgraced this freakazoid is? And now they're comparing him to Elvis? No comparison, though both of them did die after taking injections. He was taking a synthetic form of opium, of morphine, and now they're saying uh, newspapers are reporting a bunch of other drugs in his system. I mean, obviously, you could look at the guy so stoned out of his mind most of the time he had to be in a wheelchair. I mean, just a complete zombie. And, and look, I actually at a certain level feel sorry for Michael Jackson because you'd see photos of him with his nose kind of flapping in the wind, literally, and having to have like little stents on it just to hold it on because he didn't like his natural good looks. He didn't like his black skin. He didn't like who he was, so he took all these skin bleachers and all these surgeries. And it's what our culture is sick with is Madison Avenue makes you feel inadequate so they can sell you all their products, sell you their political ideologies, sell you their ideas. And so Michael Jackson is another example of what fame and fortune does to most people. When you're buying in to bling and, 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 and money just for the sake of it. I know a lot of high-powered Hollywood people, and they are happy and empowered and well-centered and hate fame and don't like the money and just use their money and fortune and fame to be left alone. But they talk about those in Hollywood that do like the fame and fortune and how they are always destroyed. It is not fun. So women out there that think your butt's too big, your waist is too big, stop feeling inadequate. Stop listening to the establishment. Make you feel inadequate so you don't respect yourself, so you'll be an insecure person that can be manipulated by the media and the culture, a culture of death by design to make you weak, public policy to break down the family, break down society. Nine times out of ten in surveys that do with women, they say, why do you leave your husband or why do you start fights with him? Oh, because I think I'm ugly and he, you know, doesn't empower me and I'm bored and my life isn't good and I'm a princess. You're not supposed to be a princess. You're supposed to live on this planet and help other people and build something and leave it a better planet when you die than when you first got here. Same thing for men. Men think you know, their whole life's supposed to be about partying and enjoyment and lots of sex and lots of women and no responsibility. And we wonder why everything's falling apart. This planet's been a hard planet to live on. Our ancestors had to fight with every ounce of energy they had just to survive and then to build civilizations. And as soon as they built a civilization and our numbers grew, then we had to fight with each other for different powerful groups always trying to enslave us. And now in the modern day, we've been convinced by Madison Avenue and the mainstream media and the map makers of the mind, the political... Uh, controllers, the engineers of society and our psyches that, oh, don't be involved, don't have responsibilities, be a big kid for your whole life, 
Don't be involved. Let the establishment, let the experts run things. Just accept the way the world's set up around you like it's a rat maze. Don't ever try to change the world around you. Don't ever try to leave your mark in any way. Just regurgitate and conform into these little boxes and then be scared to death to ever get out of that little, that, that little comfort zone bubble. Don't ever talk about politics or don't ever say anything that might be strange to your neighbor. And Oh, my God, if your neighbor's a little strange, and uh, never talk to them. So we're all isolated watching the glowing television sets at night. You go to a restaurant, and there's TVs everywhere, and your wife, your children, you, all you stop talking, all you do is watch the TVs or play on your iPhones. We're losing our humanity being sucked in to these media devices that are pre-programmed by the establishment with their images and their messages to distort what true human development and society is supposed to be all about. People say, well, you're on the media, you're on the Internet, you make films, you're on the radio. Absolutely, and I make those films, and I explain that this is kind of a culture jamming, or that I'm going in there trying to warn people and wake them up using the establishment's own medium. And I will go further that all the major studies that we've sourced and cited here show that reading actually increases your IQ and your critical thinking, and so does listening to radio. And why is that? Because with reading... Your brain has to interpret the symbols and then reconstruct them in your mind and create a three-dimensional hologram to image. If I say yellow bicycle, you see yellow bicycle. If I say Marilyn Monroe, you see Marilyn Monroe. If I say Gulfstream jet, your brain has to then analyze for a few seconds and pull up a Gulfstream jet. If I say NFL, then you have to conjure up NFL. If I say Roger Staubach, you've got to conjure up Roger Staubach. But if you're watching TV... It's all done for you. So with reading and radio, you have to develop it. All the studies, Google it. Studies show radio and reading increase IQ. And you will see the government and universities own studies. And they know that. That's why people that read books and magazines and even newspapers make more money. They have higher IQs. They're more fulfilled. They're more happy. That's why radio, talk radio listeners, they're not perfect, but statistically they have higher IQs, higher education, they're more fulfilled. You see, we're always here fighting with the mainstream media, which has all its lies and disinformation in it. And talk radio and print's got it in it, too. But think about how most of the public doesn't even read the newspaper. They don't even watch the news. If they do, it's for five minutes. When somebody like Michael Jackson dies, it's a diversion. It's a distraction. Don't let that guy enter into your psyche as an archetype and take over your mind. Push that boy who had a poor, pathetic life out of your mind and move on to real issues like total tyranny coming down on you and your family. Break your mental chains. We'll be right back with key analysis and massive news.